everybody it's Denise back for part two of my printed project for this month in part one we created some very simple background pages using light colors in the Dina Wakely media paint and then going in with a second layer using some darker tones and some stencils we're going to be creating a book and I wanted it to have a soft, natural feel to it. I didn't want it too busy and too overpowering with bright colors. So I think we've achieved this so far with the paint colors we have chosen and keeping the background really simple. So now just to add a little bit more to our pages, I'm going to add some little bit of marks and doodles and going in with a little bit more stenciling. So the first thing I chose to do was those masked areas. My plan is for that to be the journaling spots. So on every single page back and front, I am outlining very lightly and loosely with a fine tip pen. And that just defines the journaling spot just a little bit more. And on some of these pages, I'm going to doodle a little bit of foliage. And I did not try and make it realistic. It is just very loose, sketchy, doodling foliage. Like, don't be too critical of yourself. Like, even some of the ones that I drew, I wasn't liking in the beginning. But when it was finished, it was like... It just looked fine and I find the sketchier your lines the better it looks because you know that you intentionally didn't try to make it look realistic so I find the looser and sketchier your lines are the more forgiving it is. On some of the other pages, I went in with a couple more stencils in more of um, geometric shapes, like quite simple. And I used light colors mostly for the stenciling. And the two stencils I used for this process, um, they're both Dina Wakely stencils. And one is called Shape Mashup and the other one is called Marks. One of the other things I did to finish off the pages was to loosely outline the shape of the foliage that we had stenciled in part one. And this I found created a really nice look. Now I wanted my pages to look um, rough and have that more natural feel. So I'm using this very old tool that I had forgotten about. It's Zutter Distress It All. And there's these little blades in it and you just push the button and run your paper across and it makes the edges of your page all nice and rough. I love it. It is so cool. And you saw me going one page at a time. But after I remembered that you can actually put in a bunch at a time. <laughs> so to make the cover, I am taking a gel print that I created a long time ago 
that I really love and I didn't want to use the original so I scanned it into my computer and I printed it out. The colors didn't come out exactly the same as the original but it still has a really nice look. So I'm taking one sheet of craft cardstock and I'm cutting it down to four and a half by six and a quarter. So we have two pieces, one for the front and one for the back. And then I'm going to take that paper that I printed and again I'm tearing the paper so it has that worn rustic if you will <laughs> look to it. I didn't want anything that looked perfect and clean lines. I just you know, wanted that worn look to it. So I'm tearing my pages and I'll glue a piece onto the front and the back and then I'll run it through my zutter again to distress the edges. It's time to bind our album and for that I'm using sticky back canvas tape and I'm cutting it in one inch strips. The binding technique I used here I did not come up with. It is called tab binding. So you adhere two strips to your first page and then you flip that page over on its back to the left side and then on your next piece of paper you'll put one strip in the middle. Then you will flip that over to the left side and you'll fold over your two strips that you did on your first page. This binds those two sheets together. So now on your next piece you'll lay down two strips again. And then you'll flip that one over to the left side pile and you'll fold over one strip. And then on your next piece of paper, you tape down one strip of the canvas tape. And then when you flip it over, you'll fold over the two strips. And you continue with this pattern until you've done all your pages. So I'm not the best at explaining. There are many videos out there showing you the technique. Just look up tab binding. So for my cover, I wanted a little title. So I'm doing it like a label and I just took a pit piece of leftover craft card stock and I thought about adding the pattern paper but it was just too busy. So I'm taking a piece of the canvas sticky back tape because I ended up changing out my um, canvas tape with clear sports tape because I liked that it was see-through and I didn't see my tab binding on my pages. But I took one of those pieces that I had already cut and put my title on it for my cover. And if you don't mind the look, like seeing the white canvas on your album, that is completely fine. Use whatever you'd like. And it peeled up nicely, I guess, because I hadn't you know, it wasn't stuck down for too long, so I was able to peel up all the pieces without doing any damage. So that is why on my album you can't see my binding anymore, because I use clear sports tape. And I just got it at the dollar store. So it's just a little flip through of my album. I really, really like how this one turned out. And if you do decide to make one, please tag gel press and I so we can have a look at what you created. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.